excited about studying engineering. That, that seemed like that might be a good focus. The, the new facility that you want to build, how does it compare to something like a Spaceport America in New Mexico? Uh, well, um, what we're talking about would be uh, an orbital launch facility, whereas um, in New Mexico it's a suborbital. So it's basically, suborbital is you, you just kind of go up and you fall down, uh, but orbit is you go up and you stay up. So it's, it's sort of this, you've got a ground track that, um, you know, that, that uh, you, 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 when you're orbiting Earth, so you're circling Earth. Um, that, that's why it kind of has to be on the coast, because, um, you know, if you're, if you're overflying a lot of cities, which you need to do to get to orbit, um, then uh, you, you're putting people at risk. That's why an inland uh, launch facility for an orbital space flight is, um, is very difficult uh, to, uh, to do and still achieve, uh, and still be safe for people on the ground. Um, so it would be certainly at, at, a, at, a, at a much more significant level than, than what is occurring in New Mexico. Okay, so the uh, question is about Falcon Heavy, which is, um, so Falcon Heavy <coughs> is, uh, uh, uses two additional stretch, two, two, two Falcon 9 first stages, which are stretched, and then added as side boosters. And this is important in order to carry uh, the, the large commercial um, and military satellites. And um, so very, very important uh, from, from a launch uh, business model standpoint. Um, and, and also, uh, I think very importantly, provides an opportunity to, uh, to send a, a NASA uh, scientific missions deep into the solar system, uh, because Falcon Heavy will, will have about twice the payload, payload capability of, of any other operational vehicle currently on, on uh, in the world. So it'll be about twice the power of a Delta IV Heavy or a Proton, uh, which means that if you want to send probes to, say, uh, you know, Pluto or perhaps even be outside of the solar system, then this, um, this has the, the ability to do that. Um, and we'll start um, initial tests of, of Falcon Heavy hopefully towards the end of this year in terms of, of ground, ground firings. Uh, and we've got the, the huge uh, test stand that we're, we're building, which you may have seen. Um, and that, uh, uh, that's going to be very exciting. Uh, so uh, I, know, I know in Texas people like, like to do things big. And so this should really appeal to, to, to the people of Texas. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's some critics um, that's about doing all of this. Some of your heroes that you said have been critical of uh, commercial space exploration. What would you say, I guess, with this coming back, do you think that you're yeah. able to change your mind and what will be in the future? Um, yeah, I, I, um, I, I, think, I think a lot, lot of people that have been critical um, have uh, they have been critical because of the lack of precedent uh, for what's yeah. occurred. And now that, um, now that we've, we've been able to go to the space station back, I think some of the, um, I think, I think we've, we've answered some of their concerns uh, by, by showing that it can be done. So I, I think we're, we're seeing a significant decrease in, in detractors and, um, and, and everyone's just looking at the, the, the facts and saying, okay, well, now we, we've shown, uh, SpaceX has shown that that uh, can be done, and, and so there's, um, you, know, you just can't ignore the, the, the facts, basically. Um, so I think, I think a lot of people are coming around uh, to, to being supporters of, uh, of the commercial space initiative. Uh, yeah. Testing is uh, we're hoping to do short hops um, at some point in the next uh, couple of months, um, and um, and then in terms of higher flights, I mean, I'm, I'm hopeful we can go sort of supersonic before the end of the year, um, but that's that's not a that's not a prediction. That's just that's an aspiration. Um, I, I think it's it's very likely to, that we should be able to go supersonic uh, next year. Um, and uh, that, that, that's kind of a key transition point because the flight dynamics change as you, as you go through the sound barrier. So, yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, at, at a certain point, the, we, we may have to move to doing some of the really high altitude stuff. We may have to move to um, White Sands or something like that. 
Um, but uh, we want to certainly do as much of testing as possible here in America. How about uh, high and lows? Uh, you have had some high lows, lows and lows in your career. Uh -huh. This is definitely uh, something for high lows. Yes, yes, this is. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's certainly. Um, uh, yeah, for, 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 for some that have just kind of learned about SpaceX, it may seem as though things were, things just, just go great and that's how they go. Um, but, but for those who were here in the beginning, um, they realized just how difficult it was. Because uh, we, we, our first launch vehicle that we, we made, the Falcon 1, uh, the first three flights did not reach orbit. And we failed to reach orbit, so it was a very difficult time. and. Um, uh, that, that, and in 2008, we had our third sort of failure to reach orbit with Falcon 1, and, um, and, and simultaneously with that, the, 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 uh, the uh, world economy was going into a tailspin, and, uh, and I, I was personally running out of money. So uh, it was kind of grim. Uh, but fortunately, the, the fourth flight of Falcon 1 worked, and, and the subsequent the all, all flights have worked. Um, so I think it shows that we, we did learn from our mistakes. Um, you know, the saying goes, you, you can learn quite a bit from failure. Um, although I, I, I do like to point out that I think you can learn even more from success, <laughs> and it's a lot more pleasant. <laughs> but failure goes to the territory. Uh, well, yeah, this, it's, it's, it's a really tough business, and, and um, yeah, rock, rockets are very hard. I mean, there's a reason that there are um, idiomatic expressions of, or, um, about the difficulty of rocket science, and um, it's because they're true. Uh, this is a, it's, it's very, very tough, and um, so, and, and in fact, in the future, I certainly wouldn't want to predict that our, our missions will all be successful. I'm sure at some point there will be missions that, that don't succeed. Um, sure. Let me, I, I was hoping Elon would say it, so he did. And I know the folk over here understand this, but everybody else does. This is, this is risky stuff we do. Uh, it's hard. And, uh, you know, as Elon has told you, I, I like to, when I talk to people, I tell them I've lived through triumph and tragedy. Um, and it comes. It, it does. It comes with this game. Um, and it's tough. The, the fact that you've had 30 successes and then you have a failure, uh, the failures are really hard to take. But what's important is that you stick to it. Uh, you know, you're persistent and you don't give up because you realize that as Elon said, you're going to learn from the failure and you're going to come back and you're going to be better than you ever were. Uh, that's just the way it works. So, you know, for people who want to, who are waiting for something bad to happen, uh, you know, forget about it. Because it is going to, something bad is going to happen. When it happens, though, a team like this is very resilient and they just bounce back and they come back bigger and better than ever. And that's what I expect here. So NASA's in this for the long run. You know, I, I, like I said, it's a team, and uh, and so for you all, we're not going to give up on you. Uh, you're you're doing incredibly well. Stay focused, uh, you know. Stay intense, and but of all things, continue to enjoy what you're doing. Uh, that's what's most important. As long as you enjoy it, you're going to do well. So uh, have fun. Don't listen to other people on the outside.
to be quite honest. It's like a, it's like a space habitation module. I, I, I've been in one of those, which is really neat because uh, it's like a home away from home, and you can you can live in there, you can sleep in there, and you can do everything else. But one of the other things that's really neat about it is how clean it is. So, in fact, I think Don Pettit made the comment on all that how pristine the vehicle was when he went inside. He talked about it smelling like a new car. That's pretty neat.